In a dramatic turn of events, the Supreme Court expressed distress and concern at the statements of some Union Cabinet Ministers on implementation of the Sri Krishna Commission recommendations. The Commission probed the communal rights in Mumbai during 1992-93 in the wake of the demolition of the Babri Masjid. The Honorable Chief Justice of India had pointed out to the affidavit filed by the Union Government to the effect that Union has nothing to take with the matter. Analysts feel reprimanding the Union Ministers on the issue has given the likely prosecution of Shiv Sena Chief Bal Thakre a new momentum. We are again politicizing everything, filing a case taking a decision as to whether the man should be arrested and produced before the magistrate or we will just file charge sheet and let the magistrate decide whether to summon the accused or issue a warrant. It, all this is decided by the prosecution and by the police. There is no political interference. Mr. Thakre too has hyped up the whole issue. He would li like to say that, look, no one can arrest me, that they have tried, they have attempted a flimsy case and I have come out, I have been vindicated, I am invincible. He, he can go and say that. On the other hand, if he manages to do it with that, obviously the NCP Congress coalition is going to have egg on its face. Earlier, the decision of the Maharashtra government to prosecute Shiv Sena chief Bal Thakre had created political tension in Mumbai. Thakre remarked that the action of the Maharashtra government could lead to communal riots. Though I am not, they have not touched me yet. If they touch, then just think what will happen next. So I take that as a real sign. Without uh, I telling them to do something, they have done it. So this flare will be flare up will be very costly to the, any government. Thakre has invited action under Section 153A of the Indian Penal Code for writing inflammatory editorials in the Sena mouthpiece Samna in '93, prior to the riots in Mumbai. Critics warn that irrespective of Thakre's arrest. Shiv Sena activists should not be allowed to hold people to ransom. It has been pitched at a level where it seems that the entire future of Shiv Sena de depends on Mr. Thakre's arrest or non-arrest. And if Mr. Thakre is arrested, it has been made out that that's really the death blow to the Shiv Sena. It's an un unduly simplistic view in my opinion. No action has been taken in the past against him for making uh, inflammatory statements, statements calculated to incite communal violence is because his, the, his opposition um, has always felt that, oh, this will give him, um, you know, make him into a martyr and they've been scared of any kind of violent fallout. Even before the ch charge sheet has been filed, they are threatening peace and tranquility of Maharashtra. They are holding the state system to ransom. They are browbeating the ministers from discharging or the police system from discharging their statutory and constitutional obligation. The tussle between the Shiv Sena and the Congress NCP coalition ministry in Maharashtra over the Sena chief's impending arrest spilled over into national politics. Three Sena ministers in the union cabinet, Manohar Joshi, Suresh Prabhu and Balasab Vikhe Patil resigned against Thakre's probable prosecution. Prime Minister Atal Bihari Vajpayee declined to accept the resignations and the Prime Minister asked Law Minister Ram Jaitmalani to study the demands of the third largest partner of the ruling National Democratic Alliance. The most worrisome aspect of what has happened is that the NDA ministers are subordinating the constitutional system and the political system, requirements of the political system, to the needs of keeping alliance together. So for partisan aid, they are ignoring their constitutional application. What the Shiv Sena wants is that the center should exercise its authority in trying to restrain the Maharashtra government from arresting, him, uh, from arresting Mr. Thakare. Prime Minister Vajpayee's own statement, uh, he needs to, uh, he has to do this very uh, delicate sort of balancing act right now. He can't really afford to annoy the Shiv Sena, as you said, it's the third largest partner. On the other hand, there is very little that he can do himself at the moment. Jait Malani's study proved to be embarrassing for the union government. The Supreme Court ticked off the union law minister after he said that there was no case against Thakre. The court also pointed out that the minister's statements were sharply different from the official stand of the union government. Jait Malani did not stop. He hit back saying that the learned judge should have at least realized that he was making comments about a minister who knows his law. 
Reacting to this, the Prime Minister, Mr. Vajpayee, asked Jait Malani to quit. Even after all this, commentators feel the move to prosecute Thakre as vindictive and argue the case may not stand in a court of law. You first charge sheet the person, if you feel it is. They have their arguments that it's time barred or not. Let that be settled. And then let, let, the, let, let the hearings take place. And let the magistrate decide whether this indeed violated section 150, oh, this is an offence under section 153A. And if it is, let Mr. Thakre be found guilty. I just don't find this arrest business before the judgment is out a relevant factor. Precisely because there was a clear decision not to do anything which is vindictive or which even looks as vindictive, enough time was given and after proper application of mine, after examining the legal aspect, a decision has been taken to sanction prosecution. While security measures have been stepped up in Mumbai, the city police have already been given the orders to arrest Bal Thakre. But it seems that the ramifications of the action may loom large over the Indian polity for some time to come.